coming to the end, and of course, in this uh, you know, working day, dealing with all these uh, panels of uh, strategies, we have been at the beginning showed that the, what are the worries about the constructor during construction and the problems with the stand standardization and so on. But uh, we thought that was very relevant to have the point of view from the owner. <laughs> so uh, that is the reason for Manuel Arana to be here. We thank him to, to, to dedicate some time to the problems they have. Manuel Arana is a civil engineer uh, for the University Polytechnic of Madrid. Um, his MBA is in construction and real estate companies. His specialization in geothermal geochemical aspects of maritime works, uh, management of uh, infrastructures and public services, deputy director of planning and infrastructure of the Spanish national ports, member of directors of the ports authority and secretary and treasurer of the Spanish National Technical Association of Ports and Works. So a lot of responsi responsibilities on, on his hands uh, related with the, the owner of the structure finally. And I think uh, your okay. view is very important for us. Okay, so thank you very much, Maricruz, and thank you for your kind presentation. And first of all, I would like to thank uh, the organizing committee for inviting myself and for inviting also Puerto del Estado to be here and to participate today in this technical uh, workshop that for us is, is very interesting for the reasons I'm going to um, uh, share with you in, in just a few minutes. Obviously, my presentation, as Maricruz said, it has to be seen from the point of view of the owner, of the owner of the infrastructure. So I will focus on the many ideas of what we expect when we design, when we build, and when we promote a new infrastructure, and in my particular case, obviously, talking about uh, maritime infrastructure. So first of all, let me make a short presentation about Puertos del Estado, because probably somebody in the audience doesn't know us. We are a national agency, uh, depending on the Ministry of Public Works, and um, we are in charge of the general management of our national port system with 46 ports and 28 port, uh, 20, yeah, 28 port authorities, 46 ports, 28 port authorities. So let me see you uh, uh, rough figures about our uh, the evolution of our investment <coughs> in the last 25 years here in, in purple color, <laughs> blue color. Not very sure. <laughs> Perhaps a mix of both. Uh, in purple color, you can see the evolution of the public investment in the past 25 years. Uh, he, here you can see that nowadays we're investing about 400 to 500 uh, million euros a year. And our peak period was in the mid part of the past decade with approximately, well, with more than 1,000 euros a year. That was the main reason was because uh, we received uh, funds from the European Union in this period, especially uh, cohesion funds. And, uh, but in the port, in our port system, we have also a significant uh, level of uh, private investment. Um, here you can see the evolution of the private investment in orange color. And right now, the, the relation between public and private investment is around 1-1. One, one. One, one. Uh, from the public sector, we invest basically in, in the development of new infrastructure, breakwaters, key walls, new terminals, uh, land reclamation, uh, capital dredging, and uh, the private sector normally invests in infrastructure, in superstructures, cranes, equipment, buildings, and, and so on. So right now, the average of uh, our investment, total public plus private, in in is around 800 to 1,000 million euros a year, and that's something that we have to maintain in the in the years to come. And let's talk about the main topic of the workshop: the durability in in, in concrete construction. We have several experience in that field that are uh, ruling our present policy, talking about development of new infrastructures. Here, on the, in this figure, you can see some experiences that has appeared in the last uh, years. Of course, it's, uh, let's say, uh, it's only in some example, prob probably impressive examples, <laughs> probably extreme examples. 
but uh, the main idea I want to say is that th this example, this situation has appeared in very short period of time, 8, 10, 12 years uh, after construction. So uh, we think that's not acceptable, of course, at all. Uh, I don't know if the, the main, uh, well, it is a problem with materials, it's a problem with design, it's a problem with construction, or probably it's a mixture of all of these three situations. But it's something that, that, is, uh, that is happening, especially in the uh, crown walls of our breakwaters, especially if we talk about uh, vertical uh, breakwaters. Um, that situation appears in the, um, normally in the tidal range area or in the splash, uh, in the splash zone. But I'm not sure that it, it's not happening, not so aggressive, but it's happening something similar. In unseen, in unseen parts of the um, infrastructure. Obviously, the, the outer part of the structure is um, the most explosive part, especially in, in horizontal zones. But we have also several problems in the inner part of the uh, structure, as, as you can see here in, this, in these figures. Um, for that reason, we are especially interested in deepening our knowledge in this and improve the durability of our structure and in the mar maritime env uh, environment for several reasons. First of all, because it's obvious that the maritime or the marine env environment is very aggressive. That's, that's obvious, but it's the environment that we have to build our infrastructure. That's also obvious. <laughs> and uh, another reason is because our uh, normal technology is based in uh, massive concrete solutions such as um, floating zones, right? This is a, technic a technical construction that is very uh, well known in Spain and uh, normally we, uh, when it's possible, we accept this kind of solution. Here you can see an example of, of the uh, building process of a floating zone. This is the construction and this is sinking the caisson and filling it with, um, with uh, sand or gravel. And this is the, the, f the final part of the breakwater, the crown wall. That is the most explosive part and here in this area, in the tidal range area, in this blast zone, we are suffering these non-acceptable behaviors of the structure. But there's also uh, several reasons or another reason because we are very interested in increasing durability of our, of our infrastructure. One of them is that normally uh, we do not demolish any infrastructure. Uh, demolishing infrastructure in the port environment is, is not usual. It's not usual. Here on the slide you can see an evolution of the port of Valencia, let's say in the last 100 years from the beginning of the, of the 20th century. And you can see that we do not demolish, what we do is reuse all infrastructures, right? And for example, this infrastructure that was built in the mid part of the last century, originally designed as a breakwater, right now, you, if you see the present situation of the port, is a, uh, at a container terminal, a container terminal operated by APM terminal. So normally we do not demolish, we try to reuse and we are using, or we are uh, some uh, infrastructure uh, are in use beyond the uh, theoretical life cycle that we were, they were designed. So that's our uh, characteristic of our infrastructure. Here you can see some example of, of block key walls uh, right now in use. And another important idea is that um, this kind of, let's say, all infrastructures are operating beyond the life cycle, but also operating under much higher loads than the design ones. Especially if we were, if we are talking about the container market or the cruise market. Why? Because this is the evolution in the last 20, 25 years of the size of the vessel, talking about container market, or this is a new, uh, a new cruise, uh, cruise vessel. And this kind of, of uh, vessel, much, l much larger than uh, 
what we what we had when we design and construct the previous infrastructures are right now operating are right now operating and one important idea is that the decision of the size of the vessel is a decision that is taken far away from here probably in a meeting in a board of directors in Hong Kong in Denmark in Switzerland wherever but we do not control that situation we do not control that situation and this uh, very important for our for our business but what we do now and I don't know where's the limit at least I don't know I don't know if somebody knows where's the limit of the <laughs> of the size of the vessel I do not know and uh, we know what we know is that right now we are operating infrastructure built 40 50 years ago and I think that we are now building infrastructure that will be operated by our inheritors in 70 or 80 years so uh, that's the reason because we have to have uh, this infrastructure in a very correct conditions in the future another special characteristic of our structure is the they are hard, hard access difficult access right not only if we have to uh, make any class of uh, repairing activities like this one but also for inspections also for inspection inspections are very difficult uh, probably the main reason is because most part of, of the infrastructure is below sea level <laughs> but also in the uh, emerge, emerge part uh, above the sea level uh, the situation is very hard to access why because we are there's extreme weather condition there's waves there's currents there's winds and it's very difficult to access to this pine uh, uh, to this part of the structure well that was a uh, and last but not least access is also difficult difficult for what we call uh, s um, service first management first business first whatever you you want here you can see the uh, this is the container terminal in the port of Algeciras this is the Juan Carlos I terminal operated by APM terminals and this is another example this is the port of Palma de Mallorca and here you can see one two three four five six and I think here it should be a seventh one seven uh, cruise vessels moor at the same time right and the um, our market is very strict in in terms of quality service in terms of quality service vessels scales are normally uh, previously defined with months or even years in advance so for that reasons normally we do not have access or time enough to access to the infrastructure for maintenance or for inspections we only have short slots we have short limited of times and we have to uh, do our best in the in 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 the in the shortest time uh, as possible well um for all these reasons i think it's clear that we are in puerto del estado we are very very interested in the new technologies focusing focus on increasing durability of structures and or decreasing the uh, needs of maintenance right and what do you, what do we expect well of course one possible solution is develop new and better uh, materials especially if we talk about concrete because it's our uh, usual uh, material but this material concrete or other must be first of all feasible to construct and I want to underline this this idea because uh, we must follow the general principles and solution defined in the project and very detailed and specific solutions that cannot be constructed are not acceptable are not acceptable from our point of view and solutions in port must be normally constructed using floating elements are, are not normally easy, if, uh, easy to develop well if you are thinking about about a very specific material normally you first think about precast solution 
and probably is the best option from a te from a theoretical point of view. And if we define a very dif very uh, strict condition for the material, but normally precast solutions are don't or don't fit very well with a massive construction as we use in airport in ports, right? Or in maritime engineering in general. Perhaps one option is the use of mixed solution using part of regular materials with part of a specific material in the most critical parts of the uh, structure. And the idea would also uh, make this solution useful from an economic point of view because expensive material mixed with massive solution uh, are ideas that normally uh, don't fit well. And here are a couple of examples of what we are doing now. We are investigating in, in the use of, of new elements. This is an example in the port of uh, Cartagena. This is the Escombreras Basin. And this is the construction, well, the repair, the repair of a new, of a relatively new, it's 10 year old breakwaters. This is the, re the re we are rebuilding the, the, the crown, the crown wall using uh, fiberglass bars instead of steel bars. Right? This is another example. This is, well, I'm not an expert in, in, uh, in materials. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> I don't know if I will use the correct or technical word. This is some kind of fiber that is used to, um, to, wall, to build um, uh, panels plastic panels or fiber panels that we have used in uh, Puerto del Rosario in a small port in, in the Canary Island to build a floating caisson but not using concrete using this kind of material. Here you see this this is the precast panel and this is uh, here uh, you can see a picture of the of the construction of the structure assembling different pieces here you can put the caisson in the water using a regular crane, transport it um, using a tuck here, and finally sinking and uh, filling it uh, in the in the final position. Right? Um, this is a solution that we have developed in the last in the last year. Probably the main objective in this particular case in Puerto del, Ros in Puerto del Rosario was not. Um, the, the solution was not, or the problem was not the durability itself. Probably the main, our main problem was, uh, or what we were trying to avoid is the necessary uh, mobilization of a floating dock to the Canary Island, just to build two small pieces. But also uh, increasing durability is also an option of this kind of structure, of this kind of uh, solution. So thank you very much for your attention, and uh, that's all I want to say. Uh, I think I hope you find it interesting, and for all this reason, you can imagine that all your knowledge or your experience, this kind of uh, workshop uh, for us is very interesting, and all your knowledge conclusions are of course very welcome. <laughs> thank you very much.